Hey guys, Blazing Wrath here. In my last video, I mentioned mastering the Golden Triangle of Halo. Well, there is one more aspect of Halo Infinite you must learn, that being the equipment. Those that played Halo 3 might be familiar with that term. However, not all of them are the same and they kind of act like armor abilities in a sense that they only power you, the player, and not something that gets added to the map, with only one exception. The equipment is very important to know how to use as they have a moderate impact while fighting against other players. Each equipment piece is different and I think it's important to know what they look like not just in the environment but your HUD as well since Halo Infinite's HUD sucks ass and the icons are too damn small at the bottom right corner of the screen. Let's start with the drop wall. The drop wall obviously is a shield that protects you and you can throw grenades from where you threw it. The drop wall lasts for 10 seconds and if you're going up against the drop wall, note that the shield panels themselves are very weak and you can simply just shoot the device itself rather than shooting the panels. Those that played Halo 3 will kind of be familiar with this from the deployable cover equipment. Deployable cover available. Drop wall deployed. Next, the grapple shot. The grapple shot is very versatile and easy to understand. It's Halo's first grapple hook and not only can you swing yourself, you can also grapple weapons, grenades, and other equipment back to yourself. Grapple towards other players. Grapple towards vehicles including hijacking and boarding enemy vehicles. Next up, the Repulsor. The Repulsor is another versatile equipment, but this one is harder to use than any other equipment in the game because there's more stuff you can do with this. Essentially a bit of a larger skill gap and players are going to use this differently depending on how much knowledge players have on this. You can push back other players and if they're near a wall you can deal a bit of damage to them. This also works towards vehicles. You can also repulse yourself looking down, granting you a boost jump. Hostiles, repel. You can boost your grenades forward a bit after throwing them. Although from my testings, if you're trying to get the most range out, wait for a second to throw the grenade, then repulse them forward. Repulsing grenades right after being thrown is a fair strategy up close. You're forcing the fuse timer to start just a little bit faster. Spike grenades benefit the least from this, and dynamos are unnecessary as they bounce around anyways. So use this tech more for frags and plasmas if you wish. Vice versa, you can repulse grenades back to opponents and certain projectiles coming at you. There is one more way to use the repulsor, but I'll save that for another time. Next up is the Threat Sensor. Threat Sensor obtained. The Threat Sensor is nothing special. It's a mostly standard see-through wall shooter mechanic that pulses three times before expiring. Note that you can stick other players and vehicles with this. Uh, hunting, we will go.
Next, thruster. Thrusters obtained. Those that played Halo 4 and 5 will be familiar with this. Each iteration has been different. This is good for closing gaps from points A to B, and can be used in mid-air, and in any direction you move. It's a quick dash ability that is useful also in gunfights. Thrusters at maximum. Next is Active Camel. And I know some old Halo fans coming back to play Infinite will be confused and ask me, But, but, Legion, I thought Active Camel was your power up. You'd be right, dear viewer. Tell that to 343. For some reason, 343 put both Active Camo and Overshield power up in the equipment category. I disagree with that decision, but I have to mention that if you're an old Halo fan coming to play Halo Infinite. Active Camo is simple. It just makes you nearly invisible for 30 seconds, and you don't appear on motion trackers while moving. Finally, the overshield. Overshield is also simple to understand. It just gives you an extra layer of shields and can decay over time. And that's it. That's all the equipment that's currently in the game. If this video helped you, please leave a like and share this to anyone who's looking to get into Halo Infinite. If you want to stick around, consider subscribing. You can also follow me on Twitch and Twitter. Both links will be down in the description. And before I sign off this video, there's some things I want to say. I'm fully aware of the negative state of Halo Infinite. I'm just not focusing on that, and other content creators have already pointed out the problems with this game. I've only made one video venting my frustrations, and I feel like some of my feedback videos way back during Infinite's flights are still applicable. This could be my last Halo Infinite video for a while, but I'm not sure. I was thinking about making a controller settings guide for Halo Infinite, but I don't know about that since Halo Infinite's aim doesn't always feel consistent. I also wanted to make an advanced slide tech guide, but since Season 2 has nerfed ramp slides and there are some jump ups that were cut by 343, I'm not sure if I want to fully commit to making that video, since 343 can change the physics of player movement with any update, and not all the jump ups on mass have been fully reverted. I'm also aware that uh, even though uh, ramp slides have been nerfed, a new slide tech has been discovered. As of the making of this video, it's called Snap Slides. And I think that's really cool, and a nice compromisable accident to the ramp slide nerf, so I may change my mind. Even if I don't upload any more Halo Infinite videos, I hope that these guides I made help anyone out there who's looking to get started on the game and can learn very quickly just by watching my videos, which I'll put together as a playlist on the channel. I could also make MCC content as well, so I'm not saying there won't be any Halo content at all. My branding is not going to change either, as I'll always be a Halo fan even though the state of the series is like the lowest it's ever been since 2012 because of a dumb developer team known as 343 Industries. It seems like half of the 343 is compromised of very passionate people that want to make Halo the best series it can be, but the other half is trying to appease the people who aren't Halo fans and are making some of the most butt-fucking stupid decisions that steals my intelligence I don't understand. Lastly, I'm aware of the leaks that kind of dictate the future of this game, and I'm not really surprised it seems like Halo Infinite will be a better game three years later. But right now, the game is shit, and I still believe that this game should have been delayed for an additional year, as you could have had campaign co-op and forge in the game by the end of 2022. Anyways, those are my thoughts on the recent news going around Halo Infinite, and some content ideas on what to do next regarding Halo on this channel, if at all. 
follow me on Twitch as I'm trying to stream more often, and I do enjoy having conversations with my viewers there and maybe answering your questions. And until next time, peace.